Good afternoon. Another hot day in the shop. They have the Harbor Freight countersink kit. Has seven sets. Now they since there's three parts to this, they call it a 21 piece. These are a little difficult to get out of there. Sometimes you have to go get a screwdriver to get them out of there. The three parts are the drill bit itself, the collar that controls the depth of the countersink, and the countersink piece itself. So there's three pieces to each countersink, so it's a 21 piece set. In reality, it's a seven piece set. Also comes with one Allen key. Now, they're very versatile. This one, I keep it this way to use on the drill press. So I mount it in the drill press and all it does is the countersink. It doesn't pre-drill the hole. <laughs> There's occasionally a need for that. So I keep this one set up that way. In terms of using this countersink, routinely I only use the smallest size. That's about the average size for most of the screws that I use. And if you start using these bigger sizes, the hole's too big and it actually hurts holding the screw in. Now, I bought two of these. You can see that this one's probably more used than this one. Um, and there again, the smallest one is the most used. So this is the third size. You can see how big that is. You can see how big that is compared to the smallest one. I probably never used that one because it's so big. The two smallest ones what I've used the most. Obviously here I did use the third one for something. And it's versatile so I can use it on the drill press as just a countersink. And these were bought about the same time within six months of each other. Like I said, they can be hard to get out of that. Okay, how you use them. First thing you do is loosen these two. And you set how far you want to go down into the wood with your pilot hole. And I'll say we'll do that. And you tighten these. And you want to get these very, very tight. And I'm actually glad they have the set screws on both sides because that's going to hold it in place better. Okay, so I've got those two tightened up. Now I want to set the depth of the countersink. So I'll loosen the two set screws for the countersink collar. And by default, it can go all the way back for full depth or further up for less. Say I don't want to go all the way up. I'm going to use this end. Use that end just to tighten it to hold it in place. Oh, well, I thought so. Okay, so set that where I want it. Tighten it up. Okay, by default, there's a problem with this. See how they come on by default because you're twisting on that, it canters the collar to one side. So you kind of got to combat that as you put it together. Uh, that's better. So it's very versatile in how you can set it up. You can set up how deep the pilot hole goes and you can set and you can set how deep the countersink itself goes. Now since these are the ones I use the most, let's take them out and look at them. You can see that the pilot hole is different on the two. And the depth of the countersink I have set differently on this one. And you can see that that goes a little cantered. Even after I took the time to set it up, it still went cantered. It's, it's when you torque on these that it does that. When you torque on the screw, it turns it one way. So there's two examples. The exact same countersink bit, but set up radically different. This will do a very deep countersink, and this will do a very shallow countersink. And that depends on the size of the screw that you're using. 
and how far into the surface you want it to go. So these work pretty good. They would be slightly better if they were notched to set in a drill better. Uh, I use these on the drill press all the time and I use them with the hand drill. Come with a nice case. Keep all your pieces together. Good morning. I shot the video the other day of using these countersinks and how they worked. Somehow the piece of the video that covered demonstrating these didn't survive. So needed to do a follow-up video. So I've got my drill master drill. Got me a piece of sample wood. I mostly use this size. You can see that that's cantered sideways and that's a symptom of how you put it on. What I usually end up doing is taking a pair of needle nose pliers and just twisting it a little. If you can just get it in the right place with the needle nose pliers, it'll stay in the right place while you're using it. Very hard to get it perfect. So chuck it in the drill. You want to get that chuck as tight as possible because that tends to spin. So there you go, actually a nice countersink. Okay, so let's do a different one. This, this is basically the same tool, but I've got a, more of the end sticking out and I've got a lot more countersink. So let's chuck that one up and try it. So that spins. Part of that is a symptom of me pushing too hard. So you can see that one went deeper, but not a whole hell of a lot. But if different types of screws that you need, this will work fine. Another configuration I use is this one. There is no pre-drill of the hole. It's just the countersink. I mostly use this on the drill press. Let's go ahead and use one of the bigger ones. As you can see, that's a lot bigger hole. I don't have a lot of need for that. The countersink I might have a need for, but the pilot hole, probably not. So there's a good demonstration of using them and the possible configurations. I bought two of them because I want to use these three in different configurations without changing them all the time. So just gives me some versatility and they're only $8, so it's not like it's that expensive. Okay, so if you like the videos, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.